way that I'm approaching this is to say that in the context of the reading panel, which was launched yesterday, the intention is to say every year we want to see progress. Every year the reading panel is going to convene, what's the progress? How can we help you to make the progress? What are you doing? And how can civil society support? So I have tried to bully each of my friends on the panel to be quick. I went through their slides and said, no, 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 no. They know they've got five minutes and that I'm going to be strict. I'm going to sit over there. I'm going to stand up at four minutes. And I've got a stick net. And so I think the presentations are ready. And for the technical people, this is the order we're going on and this is why. I'm going to start with Maureen. Maureen is the director for GET in the DBE. And I think that one of the complexities of implementation is province and national. So let's hear, first of all, national's response. And she knows she's got five minutes. And then um, I'm not sure how many of you follow tweets and all of the tweets that they've been about alphabetical order. If you're on Twitter, you'll know the joke. But then I'm going to follow alphabetical order, Eastern Cape, Limpopo, Western Cape. And if you've been following the judicial service thing, we framed by two women, beginning and ending. And nobody's asking if they're ready. Over to you, Maureen. Thank you so much. Um, I have to prop and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maureen Kitimetsu Modiba from the Department of Basic Education in Pretoria. Um, you know, for the technical gentlemen, um, this is presenter number two. Yeah, because we've changed the order. I'm just, oh yeah, here we go. Thank you so much. And I think it's good that um, the DBE's presentation comes after the presentation uh, or the panelists from, um, from the uh, business sector. So they will see that uh, we do need uh, you know, some kind of um, support in terms of resources for um, our literacy programs. So um, this is quite a packed presentation, but I'm just going to focus on um, you know, the, key, the key points of the presentation. Um, I just wanted to showcase some of the programs that we have embarked on in order to improve reading for meaning. So uh, for the foundation phase, um, this is uh, what we have done. Uh, a lot of, has been spoken about the recovery ATPs, so we have tried to develop three-year recovery ATPs so that we guide teachers and learners on key concepts and content to teach. And then we have also tried to provide um, remote digital learning um, in the form of video lessons that are focusing on key components of languages. So this is just an example of um, last year's broadcast schedule, um, which shows the different grades. And then our focus has been on, uh, for the foundation phase on literacy. Um, we also have DBE workbooks, and uh, the DBE workbooks have been developed for the foundational subjects, which are languages and mathematics. And um, our workbooks have also been um, adapted into Braille to assist learners with uh, physical barriers to learning. Um, this remote doesn't seem to be working properly. Okay, so those are examples of um, the workbooks that we have in the system. And uh, you know, these are provided to all the learners in all the schools. And um, yeah, this is just um, to show that we have also made them available for learners with barriers to learning, for learners with disabilities. And um, Yes, there's a, I don't know, are you controlling the slides? Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, so this slide is just an example of uh, the grade R workbook. And um, we are also showing uh, the workbooks in Braille and learners using the workbooks. Learners using the toolkits that have been Uh, learners who are using uh, the toolkits that we have developed and uh, provided. Um, so we also have a project that we are implementing in Pumalanga uh, in collaboration with um, 
uh, our different partners, and this is called the systemic improvement of literacy and numeracy in the foundation phase. We are implementing this uh, project in the two districts of Mpumalanga, focusing on the foundation phase. And um, I have provided an overview of what the project is all about and uh, it, the approach to, this, to the implementation of this project, which focuses on languages and maths. And uh, the objectives of this project are to ensure that we provide structured learning programs and that teachers are also capacitated uh, in terms of the pedagogical approaches. Um, so this is, um, the slide is actually showing the languages that are being targeted for that particular project. Um, in, addition to, in addition to the home languages, as well, we also have an English first additional language. Um, we also have um, our uh, early grade reading assessment, which is being implemented in Quintas 1, 2, and 3 schools. And at the bottom on the table there, we are showing um, where we started with uh, early grade reading assessment. Um, and uh, at the moment, we are currently uh, implementing phase four of early grade reading assessment. And this comprises uh, two kits for early grade reading um, for home languages, uh, grades one, two, and three, as well as English first additional language. And um, so this, these are the achievements for early grade reading assessment. And um, in some of the provinces, we have almost reached universal coverage. So uh, I'm just going to um, speak, uh, quickly speak to this uh, project, which is the foundation phase home languages structured learning pilot, which we implemented last year in collaboration with uh, the NECT. Uh, it is being implemented in eight provinces, and those are the numbers we are targeting 112 schools. Western, sorry, Western Cape is shown in red because uh, they have opted to not participate in the project because they have a similar project with uh, Funda One Day. So that is why we, um, you know, they are highlighted in red. Um, so for the intermediate phase, um, we all also have uh, the recovery ATPs that are focusing on key languages concepts. And um, next week, we will be involved in a workshop where we will be developing uh, guidelines for teaching reading with comprehension as well as uh, literature. So um, I just wanted to skip these slides and focus on uh, the second part of the question, which is uh, how civil society is responding um, you know, to, the, to the various interventions that we've put in, 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 um, in, in the sector. And uh, these are some of the partners that we are working with. So um, these are the partners, uh, we work with the NECT, we work with various organizations, um, that have been listed here. Some of them are being represented uh, in this left quarter. Thank you so much. And Prof, I hope I haven't taken up too much time. The second person alphabetically, thank you, Maureen, that was great, is Ray Chukwadi from thank the you. Eastern Cape. And uh, you just need to have the presentation and it's ready for you. And then there's the machine that you point at. Hmm? Over to you, Ray. I'm going to stand up after four minutes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair. I was looking for the poly poly, so I found poly poly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, just to say that in the Eastern Cape, we started uh, with some definition and scoping and working with the Nelson Mandela Institute we sort of came up with a three-part thesis to what we wanted to do. Uh, it all pointed to one thing, the importance of mother tongue-based education uh, in the foundation phase. And then secondly, the alignment between uh, linguistic infrastructure in schools and the language kids use at home. And then thirdly, the alignment between interventions and the language of teaching and learning as well as um, the language kids use at home. And we found this to be very significant and important. And then that led to the design of our strategy, which is the basis on which we invite everybody to participate in our reading program in the Eastern Cape. It has four pillars, colleagues. The first one is training and development. And we've taken it further with the uh, partnership with Funda Wanda, we've established a an academy, it's called Reading Academy, which is an academy that's a partnership between Funda Wande, Eastern Cape Department of Education and Rhodes University. Uh, the focus is on the science of teaching of reading. 
and we've prioritized subject advisors, uh, HODs, as well as senior teachers to be the core that we start with. Because of COVID-19, we had to adapt the delivery strategy and we had to do a lot of online mechanism. But our wish over the next three years is to develop this academy into a fully fledged institute that will be looking after the training and development of teachers uh, in teaching of reading. The second one is resourcing. As you've heard, we piloted the graded Isikosa readers that we sent to all our primary schools, grade one to four, where we were looking at possibility of the extension of the task of reading from school into home. So when COVID inserted, we had to put together packages to parents to support kids uh, writing. So these readers are the kinds of readers that they took home and they could use both at school and at home. So it's a package of readers that we, we dealt with. But we also had demonstration videos that were attached to the package, as well as you know, some lesson demonstration for teachers on how to teach reading. So it was quite a very useful resource as it is still a very useful resource. I should think the basic misunderstanding at times is the fact that people think that we must print every year. Our view is that you can print in three years because it's not your consumables like your stationery. it's a book. So we are encouraging schools to try as possible to retrieve these data so that the next generation of kids can, can, can benefit. So for the new financial year, it's going to be the second stock of readers that we must print. I should think the printing is not costly, as, as Penny was saying yesterday. So we're looking at very cheap means. Then thirdly, it's assessment. As you all know, colleagues, there is no national, you know, bench, or nationally benchmark assessment mechanism uh, to deal with learners' achievements in grade one, three, six, and nine. So we're trying to look within the context of AGRA and see if we can establish a framework for assessment, particularly standard reading assessment, which we are currently piloting in the Eastern Cape, looking at possibilities. Then the last but not least, uh, it's advocacy and communication, particularly uh, mobilizing communities. We had agreed on the five T's in our engagement with Funda Wande. Uh, Tank is very important. What is the language of teaching of reading and writing? Uh, the actual teaching, the text, the test. So those are the five T's that are primary uh, in this collaboration uh, project. We then did an evaluation sort of midterm review of how far we've gone. And estimates show that the anthologies are associated with learners being able to read an additional three words uh, per minute and can identify additional eight letters correct per minute compared to. So we, we, that was a very interesting uh, midterm study that was being done uh, by, 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 by UCT, which they did with us. Then on the intervention itself, I should think the standard definition was, was statistically significant um, at 0 0.17 in terms of capacity and improvement in that year of implementation. Thank you, Chair. Just to say these are the partners that we have uh, in the implementation of reading. We're looking for more partners on quite a lot of these. Thank you. It's been done nationally in the print lives. Mpahlele Limpopo. At one minute, I'll stand up. Right. Um, let me take this opportunity to thank you, a program director, for giving me this opportunity to share with the colleagues uh, some thoughts. Uh, just leave it there. Leave the screen. Yeah, I'll talk for five minutes uh, using the screen as it is. Uh, I'm so glad that the organizers felt it appropriate to use the term Lechotla. Lechotla is a concept that we are familiar with in Limpopo because it's a Sotswana word. And basically it means gathering of village people. And the beauty of it is that it, um, it creates an environment where you level the playing field, the power relations, and we face each other. But here, I'm the only powerful person we are looking at now. Um, unfortunately, uh, it doesn't suit the criterion of Lechotla, but uh, suffice to say in the 21st century, it probably does. The second issue is around the literacy. Um, 
COVID-19 exposed us. All of us are illiterate now, am I correct? In the 20th century, all of us would be literate because we would be able to read and write. But in the 21st century with COVID, we were all caught up with our proverbial pens down. We were now exposed that we're not digitally literate, for example. We're not literate to work in a cyberspace. The list goes on and on. And what we did in the province, <clears throat> noticing that we don't have a baseline because common assessments were done away with. And therefore what we did, we developed standardized assessments at a provincial level for grades three, six, nine, 10, and 11 in select subjects. And we digitized them because people were at home or they were doing rotational timetabling. We digitized in grades three, six, nine, and 11. And teachers were exposed because the learners in grade three were more techno fluent than their teachers. And they were able to write mathematics in Chivenda, in Chitsonga, in Sipedi. And we now have the results. We have a baseline that we are now using to intervene. And now we are able to determine where to intervene and how to intervene. And now when you come to issues around learning losses, and that's where we found it very problematic to call it a loss because you only are able to tell if somebody lost, if that person learned something and lost it. But here it's not a loss. It's a loss of time, it's a loss of money. If you look at what they mean and they try to quantify what has been lost, there's no resemblance to knowledge or skills. It's about, I lost six hours or six months, will take 10 years to catch up should we use the term? I mean, why don't we say management losses, parenthood losses, governance losses? And so we came with the weight of the deficit that required, and we said that the only way is to do digitized content and make it accessible to all the learners who at their own pace will be able to recover. And therefore, the initiatives that we have are now beefing up the rollout of ECD strategy, the reading plan that was approved, and various stakeholders like Funda Wande, et cetera. And we are now glad that this, some of the recommendations have now been adopted at the basic education effort. I thank you. We now have um, Almeret Datoy from the Western Cape Department of Education. Over to you, Almeret. Thank you and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for the opportunity to present on behalf of the Western Cape Education Department. Um, I will mostly speak to the first three slides due to time constraints. First of all, how did we respond to learning losses during the COVID lockdown, specifically that first part when our learners was restricted at home? Um, we developed a uh, we started a pilot with NGOs um, on the at-home learning where we um, run into, we, we had a program in the streets, literally with the kids to support them in, in the, uh, in the uh, um, teaching that they have lost. Together with that, we um, printed time resources which focus on literacy and mathematics for grade R and grade one that we sent out to our parents and we, uh, we continue with that. We also developed as part of our reading strategy, our virtual library, which we are giving out every quarter, every term. Um, our reading strategy was launched just before the lockdown in March, 2020. Um, we ran a lot of radio and um, TV broadcast. We developed lessons, and this was a mammoth task between the um, a provincial office and our district offices where our subject advisors supported us in developing lesson plans with step-by-step -step guides for teachers and specifically for parents so that they can assist their children at home. And that went out on a WhatsApp poster with videos um, to demonstrate how it can be taught. And then we had a series of webinars linked to our lesson plans was the Vula Bula anthologies. Um, and then we continued with our teacher professional development through virtual platforms. Um, 
Is there opportunity for partnerships? We certainly believe we cannot do without partnerships. We need our partners. But there needs to be a balance so that, as a previous presenter has said, there's not an overflow and that whatever is being done by partners in our schools aligns with what the provincial improvement plan is and what our objectives is. We have strong relations with our HEIs, with our unions. Our strongest partnership at the moment is with Funda One Day, where uh, we are piloting an Afrikaans home language program. 60% of our learners in foundation phase is Afrikaans and our Western Cape systemic results, which is an external evaluation, is showing that this is the learner, these are the learners that is also struggling the most in terms of reading. Um, let me just go to the next one. Oh, sorry, there. The, um, what are we currently doing? Um, we are continuing with our lesson plans, our activities and our videos together with the broadcasting. But we took the bold decision. You heard the presentation earlier today on phonics and the importance of a synthetic phonics approach. And we decided to follow a differentiated approach in each of our three home languages, um, of which Funda Wanda is our biggest partner. And we are um, uh, rolling out that, that program at the moment in 90 pilot schools for Afrikaans and 10 Isikosa. We will continue with our webinars. Our WCED e portal has about 27,000 resources on. We are having about 400,000. Um, people visiting our site throughout a month. We will continue with after-school classes. We, um, for Isikosa Home Language, we changed the training on African language reading, which was based, which is based on the um, language structure, um, uh, the a language framework that was released um, into an online course. And last year, we could train. 89% of our grade two teachers who could complete the course in a cell on a, on a Moodle platform. And then lastly, we are also, um, uh, we also gave our guidelines to our foundation phase teachers at the beginning of this year, where we give them um, um, guidance on pedagogies within the classroom in terms specifically uh, for each subject, but also for literacy with a summary at the end of what the core competencies is that we believe every learner should be able to master. Thank you. I think that we should be proud of what's being achieved. I was so impressed with all of your presentations. Thank you. So let's hope that by the time they have the next reading panel in a year's time, we see the fruits of your labors in results but things don't happen so quickly ne? so thank you everybody now when i was caucusing with maureen who i was sitting next to about this point i said either people are going to say that was fabulous let's go or maybe there's going to be questions and comments and i'm hoping that there will be questions and comments but we will understand if you have to rush because people, especially with us flying. So let's, there's people standing by with the mics, if you want to, one. Uh, any more hands? So we'll start, and I don't know your name. So. Hi, I'm Jackie Dornbrack from Room to Read. Um, I'm interested that there's been no talk about school libraries. Where are the libraries and why are we not focusing on providing Very schools good. with libraries? That's the first question. I think you had your hand up. Just introduce yourself, although everybody should know you by now. There is a lot that's happened. Thanks, David. Um, a lot of interventions, a lot of thoughts. Um, but what is in place to determine to what extent some of these interventions work? don't work. Um, we heard from uh, the philanthropy group, their sort of process of reiteration. Re so just wondering, you know, is, is that being incorporated in all of these initiatives? Thank you. Are there any more hands? Yes, there's a third hand there. Should we make that the last one? Maybe we need one more question. No? Okay. So after you, then we're going to see who'd like to respond. And then I'm going to hand to Funda one day to end of the day. Thank you so much.
Great. I think my question is not just, um, you know, Mary, you suggested at the start that we should all be saying, how can we help you? So yes, we're saying that, but like, how can we make it easier for us to help you? So it's not just, oh, well, we have books, oh, we have training, but there's, there's, a, there's a matching, there's an articulation of the right thing in the right format at the right time and the right politics. So, so beyond just a level of what would help you the most, what makes it easier for us as civil society to come together and contribute to this? Mm. Excellent questions. We've got three questions. One is about classroom libraries. The other is how are you monitoring your own success? How are you defining your success? How are you monitoring it? And then the third one is, I liked it, is how can you make it easier for us to say, how can we help you? So if you'd like to kick off, you don't have to follow any national, provincial or alphabetical order. Don't be shy. Maureen, go for it. Oh. Okay. Um, let me respond to the question on um, the last one. How do we make it easier for, for business to work with us? Um, and, and this is from um, you know, the perspective of the Department of Basic Education. Um, you, you know, um, schools belong primarily to provinces. So I think it would be, it would be best um, you know, to work directly with provinces that you may have identified. And even with provinces, it's always best to, you know, to work in a selected school or selected schools in a district. Um, you know, very often we get inundated uh, with emails to the minister, to the DG about different organizations that want to partner with us. And it sort of prolongs the process of um, you know, allocating resources to where they are needed because, um, you know, it's always best to approach provinces because they, schools belong to provinces and not, nationally to the, not necessarily to the Department of Basic Education. We are responsible for the development of policy, for the implementation of policy and for monitoring thereof. So um, the best people to speak with if you need to help, if you need to intervene, are the colleagues that are sitting next to me. So I think uh, the same goes for the question of uh, classroom libraries. We do have um, interventions that we initiate at the Department of Basic Education, one of which is the one that I mentioned, the systemic improvement of literacy and numeracy in the foundation phase. And through that intervention, we are looking at uh, provision of resources such as classroom library boxes um, and, and also ensuring that teachers are properly supported and guided on, ped on pedagogies of uh, teaching, reading with meaning, um, issues of mathematics. Uh, but we are uh, coordinating that project because it's a EU funded project. And it's going to be monitored, it's going to be evaluated, and we are going to use the results thereof to scale it up. So uh, I will leave it to my provincial colleagues to respond to the other questions. Thank you. Thank you. I can see Ray, I can see Marita. Do you also want to say? Okay. So, Eastern Cape, Western Cape, Limpopo. Probably just to start with the, the class libraries. A part of our budgets before the COVID 19 had an, an amount that we always dedicated to uh, school libraries, so buying resources. For over a period of five years, we're able to build a resource space for teachers, whether it's, it's a corner or it's a box of books in, in, in our primary schools. We had to review it because our funding was cut drastically. Mm -hmm. So for 2021, 2022, we could not do anything meaningful, but historically, we've always done that. Uh, you, you, will, you will also appreciate the restricted nature of the schooling system, particularly where we have very small classrooms, you know, you can't have a big library, but we had to make sure that we make some kind of library out of a classroom, uh, set up systems, uh, book borrowing, you know, uh, book usage and all of that. The second one, which is almost the most difficult one is how do you measure impact? So if you go through Patricia Rogers and typologies of impact, uh, it, it will really tell you that sometimes it's very difficult to say, at the spare of a moment, you know, this works, this doesn't work. So over time, we have three phases in the Eastern Cape. We have what we call inception report. So when we start any project, we have to make sure that it has settled. So we do an assessment of how it's going to settle, how it's aligned 
to the institutional arrangements in the department because we separate between strategic inputs that we utilize and our responsibilities as government. We then have a midterm review to see where the project is. Uh, if we were to redesign, we, we do. Uh, that's what we also do with you guys for now one day. And then we have what we might call an exit report once we finish, mm -hmm. you know. Then we we'll sit and we'll ask ourselves what lessons, how best can we redesign that, that sort of thing. Uh, how do we make it easier for you to join us? I should think what's very important and what's the golden rule is that you should all know what the bigger vision is. The DBE should be telling everybody, this is where we want to take South Africa on reading. Yeah. And we as promises, this is the chunk that we want you to buy. But what we have to do is to, is to streamline our designs in such a way that we are very specific about what we want from you guys. We don't want funders to take over departments. We don't want funders to throw money into the problem. We, if you look at our strategy, really, for us, the big challenge is the art and the science of of reading. And that's where we want to focus. And on the issue of the Reading Academy, this is what we'll be selling as the Eastern Cape. Let's do this academy so that we can create a proterity or a, 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 you know, a, 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 a basket of professionals who can teach reading in the Eastern Cape. So that's sort of the, the approach. Thank you so much, Thank Ray. You. Thank you. In terms of the library, the question on the libraries, in the Western Cape, we have what we call our Edilist department, and they focus specifically on reading. And um, in each of our district offices, there is a subject advisor specifically allocated for library services. And then also in our rural districts, uh, we have what we call a book van, which is like a mobile library going around to certain areas within the rural areas, um, which is fully sourced with a library to assist in our rural areas. We also encourage the um, use of reading corners in the foundation phase classrooms. And we um, um, and then, of course, the libraries at the school. In terms of the question of the monitoring and evaluation and uh, measuring impact, that is a very important part of all our interventions. We are fortunate to have the WCED systemic results, which does provide us um, very valuable data in terms of um, our interventions. Is it working? Is it not working? What, how do we need to plan differently for the way forward? But then together with that, that's where the partnerships comes in. Um, uh, um, we, when we roll out a main intervention, we make sure that it goes hand in hand with a research and with a monitoring and evaluation like the Funda One Day pilot now is doing a research in 100 of the schools to so that we can ensure that we do have impact. And that is why um, we cannot without our partners, because they often also bring the funding for such an evaluation to the table, which we as a government department do not have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Libs. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> let me also start with the, uh, the library. Um, in our case, we have a reading plan, which is a five-year plan. And uh, within it, there are a number of activities and pillars, which include re establishment of reading clubs, digital libraries, and so on. But we are also collaborating with the Department of Arts and Culture, and also various funders and donors. And as part of funding some of the activities, the province has what is called Limpopo Province Education Development Trust, through which funders and donors are channeling funds to fund certain activities. This, however, does not stop each individual funder to approach the department and the bilateral through MOUs and so on. And then, <clears throat> like Eastern Cape, uh, we don't have enough, I mean, adequate rooms, uh, classrooms. Uh, to, to have dedicated library sessions. That is why we are going the route of the digital libraries. And then regarding the impact evaluation, we have a dedicated uh, m &E. it's a directorate, and it chooses especially interventions that have long-term impact, like the mm -hmm. uh, learner attainment strategy. They are having a long longitudinal study over three years. But if you've got short-term projects and those then you've got research project also within the same directorate that is able to work with the funder or the donor uh, to assess the impact of the intervention. 
And then uh, the last one, I think um, it was around a society, how the province could work with society, society in general. Uh, we do have a number of platforms that have been created. I think the one at national level, like the uh, National Education uh, Collaboration Trust is replicated in the province. And it's a wonderful platform for a number of communities and unions and associations to partner with government in rolling out interventions in the province. I think that gives uh, yeah. just a high level picture. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. I wanted to say I love this panel. It was a real privilege to, to listen to you. I want to thank you for the careful preparation. And I want to thank you for letting me chase you and that you couldn't present everything you'd prepared. And thank you that you're going to be able to share your slides with everyone, because I certainly need to go back to the detail. So thank you. And over to Funda one day to close for us. Thank you. This, this, and it was strategic to, to um, leave them, maybe we can just leave them there. Um, Mr. Ray, when he arrived two days ago, he said, <laughs> don't, don't, don't put me in a situation where, you know, finger pointing and whatever. And I said, I don't know, you guys are lost and probably people would have like sneaked out by then. So I guess the plan worked. So Mr. Ray, we are even now. Um, so just a um, word of thanks, uh, firstly, to our chairs. Uh, I think we had fabulous chairs that asked a very pro uh, provocative, even the English is flying out, it is, <laughs> after four. <laughs> um, and also obviously to our panel members that took the time to prepare, um, to everyone that has traveled far. Um, Sarah, now you can go and enjoy your uh, Cape Town holiday. Um, and also to the team from the Wanda team and the tech support. Uh, I'm so glad, apparently there was another scheduled um, load shedding at two and it didn't happen. So um, all, yet again, all styles and aligned and yes, travel safely, keep safe everyone. And we're probably gonna touch base again, same time, but next year. Thank you. Thank you.